Hey, so hope everyone is well. Um, I'm going to keep this all fairly simple and do a lot more doing than showing. Uh, so I um, this is all going to be fairly rough and ready. Like I've not really got a big high production value at the moment because of the the coronavirus. I'm, I'm working from home, you know. So you might hear kids crying in the background or anything in between. Um, the lighting probably isn't the best either. Uh, but the main thing here is that I'm going to show you the the different things that you need to do to uh, grow your your organic traffic. So I'm going to cover pretty much everything from on-page SEO, technical SEO, keyword research, content plans, link building, internal link building, everything that you're going to need to know, okay? And I'm going to jump straight into it with keyword research. So I think this is the kind of, usually the best place to start because um, it can get the creative juices flowing and, um, you know, really get you set up on the road to success, okay? So um, with that, I'm going to jump in and get, to show you this right <laughs> um all right so look keyword research what is it why does it matter so with the keyword research you obviously need to have a plan built for what type of things you want to rank for and to do that you're going to need to do a little bit of research to find out different things like search volume and everything else in between okay um but one of the most important things to remember with keyword research is types of keywords so um the, the, you might have refer, or heard this being referred to in a couple of different ways. So, for example, you might have heard of um, exact match, long tail, and LSI keywords, or you might have heard of uh, primary, secondary, or supporting keywords. No, like they're all the same thing, basically. I'm going to run through them um, pretty quickly. But, like, these three guys and these three guys are pretty much all. Um, they mean the same thing. So exact matches, primary, long tail, secondary, LSI supporting. So depending on what uh, expert or what blog you're reading, you might hear it being referred to as that. So like, I suppose the reason I'm trying to show you both of them is so that you don't get confused, okay? Um, so quickly, the, a couple of different sources, you can go to find exact match and primary keywords. Uh, so Google Ads, Uber Suggest, SEM Rush, and Ahrefs, um, Long tail, you'll find with AdWords, bottom of the search page, Ahrefs, SEMrush, LSI Graph, Uber Suggest, and uh, supporting keywords. Ask the, or sorry, people also ask on the Google search page. Um, answer the public, LSI Graph, Ahrefs, SEMrush, and then. Sorry, I'm just gonna put that there because it's going to drive me crazy okay um so one of the most important things to remember about keyword research is uh keyword intent okay um so we're going to show i'm going to show you some different ways to to, to find keywords and how to i suppose pick the right keywords for your site um but what you need to also understand is the thing called keyword intent so what keyword intent is is what is the person looking to do when they search for it so like i suppose i probably jumped a little bit ahead and i should have explained that a keyword is anything that someone types into google to search okay so whether if i'm looking for red shoes and i type red shoes into google my keyword is red shoes if i type um best holiday resorts in miami then my keyword is best holiday resorts in miami so it can be one singular word or it can be multiple words that's what a keyword is okay um so what you have to bear in mind though is that you when you're creating a piece of content for a keyword and when i say content i don't just mean blog so content is any page on a website whether that's the home page a service page product page blog whatever else in between okay so when you're creating a piece of content that you want to rank or drive traffic to um a keyword for you need to create the right piece of content so you need to understand what the, the keyword is is about and what the intent of the person searching behind that keyword is. So for example, if you had a, let's say you, you're doing SEO for WeWork and you're trying to rank for co-working space at Dublin. So what you'll do is go and look this. Now obviously I'm gonna show you how to find the keywords. So I've just made this keyword up. It might not have a good search volume, but um, bearing it in mind, right? When you go and look and you see it, when you Google the co-working space in Dublin, the first couple of results are from websites that are have written um, posts that have got multiple uh, co-working spaces in Dublin. Then you've got a page here for iconic offices. So let's just take this one as an example, right? 
So they've got a specific page for co-working offices in Dublin. Um, this is an article. This is an article. This is a home page. Okay, so um, this is an interesting one actually, and I, I wish I had uh, checked this beforehand. But just to go through it, right? So you've got these articles. All right. So here you go. Right, you've got this article: twelve of the best co-working spaces in Dublin. So this is created by Travel Mag, right? So if you own a co-working space in Dublin, you're probably not going to um, write an article with the best co-working spaces in Dublin. Now you could, um, but you're probably not going to because you're probably not going to want to name your competitors. Now, based on the results here, this type, that type of content, so a blog article about the, the best co-working space in Dublin with multiple co-working spaces listed is probably what Google wants because that's what's ranking highest. No, there's obviously other factors to take into account here, but just taking that into account, right? Then you've got the other example there with Iconic Offices. So Iconic Offices um, got multi-locations or whatever, but the page is ranking for them as a page about co-working space in Dublin, and they've got all their stuff on there, like the different buildings, their membership types, and so on and so forth. Um, You've got this one, co-create, so it's a co-working space in Dublin, and their home page was what was ranking. Um, and again, T was another one that was ranking on page one, and their home page what was ranking. So, in that search result, there's multiple different types of content. So there's blog par blogs from third-party sources. There's um, landing pages on 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 a on a co-working spaces website. And then there's home pages. So, for example, one mistake that's often made is that people don't look at the type of content that Google is looking for, and they don't they create the wrong type of content. So, and a, a bad example here would be so. Let's say I, I do my keyword research, and I found that this co-working space Dublin keyword had I don't know 500 searches a month, and I say, okay, this is great. It's exactly what I want to rank for. But without doing any other research, I might then go and create a blog, and I'm, the blog post might be how to find the best co-working space in Dublin. And I might say, okay, well, you know, my keyword is co-working space Dublin. I've wrote about how to find the best co-working space in Dublin. That's definitely going to rank. But like the thing about it is, is that it's probably not going to rank because it's not the right type of content. So bringing it back here, you always need to um, bear in mind what the right type of content is, you know? So when you're doing your keyword research and we'll go through this, um, before you create your content, you need to understand what Google is looking for. And the easiest way to do that is by looking at the results. Um, so, you know, sometimes it'll be a home page you're going to need to optimize or like, you know, create if it's a new website, it could be a service page, it could be a blog, an infographic, a white paper, ebooks, case studies, videos, product reviews or whatever. Um, videos. So for example, actually, um, I'm just going to try this now. I haven't tried it before, but like cat falling down the stairs. Yeah. So let's say I wanted to rank for cat falling down the stairs. The vast majority of the results on page one here are videos, right? So they're all links to videos. So again, if I create a blog about cat falling down stairs, it's probably not going to rank because it's not the right type of content. Whereas if I've got a video about a cat falling down stairs, then then I've got a, I've got a good piece of content that I can you know that I have a realistic chance of of. Uh, of getting on page one so you, you always need to bear this in, in mind it's it's the it's it's really important that when you're doing your keyword research and when you go to create um your your content so whatever type of content that is that you're creating the right type of content for what google is looking for and and remember that you know it's fairly easy to find out literally when you when you when you do your keyword research and you want to see what you should be creating for a keyword just google it and have a look through it you know um like just here as an example, so I'm gonna type in plumber in Park. So like when I go and look at this, um for the most part, this like if I discount like the golden pages and find a plumber lottery, for the most part it's home pages ranking. Um uh you know, so like that 
what I'd need to do here would be to optimize my homepage. Again, if I wrote a blog post, how to find the, the best plumber in Cork, that's not going to rank because no matter how well optimized it is, it's just not the right piece of content. So that's your, your general overview, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to break it down and I'm going to start actually doing the keyword research. So um, we're going to do the keyword research in two phases. So first of all, we're going to do some brainstorming and we're going to use some tools like Google AdWords and um, some other free tools in like Uber Suggest. And we're just going to brainstorm and come up with keyword ideas and, and try and find what the volumes and stuff are, are for them and see whether they're worth contacting. Uh, the second thing we're going to do then is we're going to do competitor keyword research. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the best competitors in our um in our in our field and we're going to reverse engineer what keywords are driving traffic to their site and then we're going to use that to build a, a keyword plan um out and then after that we can go ahead and we can create the um content plan and everything else from there so like with this you've got a you've got a two-pronged approach like you're, you're you're brainstorming and you're possibly finding keywords that your competitors haven't thought of but then you're also speeding up the process by or sorry by doing the competitor keyword research you're speeding up the process because you are finding what uh driving success for your competitors and then you can just basically hack that and uh do, do it do your own and do it better so that you can outrank them okay and it's going to be break broke down into three different parts so i'm going to do it for for international um i'm going to do it for national and i'm going to do it for local businesses so an international business will be the likes of fresh books and um Send and Blue, so FreshBooks is an accounting software. Send and Blue is a um, email marketing software. National, then I'm going to look at so there's an air coach here, which would be a national bus company in Ireland. Then I'm going to look at Mega Bus in Canada, um, and then I've got um, these guys here who are the BostonPlumber.com, so they're a plumbing company in Boston, and I'll do another uh, local one as well. I'll do like so. I'll go through a couple of examples. Um, but again, just to come back to giving you the right type of content, you know, so um, when you look at FreshBooks as an example here, you can start to see um, patterns within their site. So FreshBooks is a cloud accounting software. So when you go and you look at their menu here, you can see that they've broken it down into different pages. And that's another important thing as well that I should have mentioned, actually. Again, sorry, I'm just going off the cuff, so I'm not necessarily well prepared here. But um, what you need, what you want to do is have um, one page per per topic or per keyword. No, it doesn't necessarily need to be per keyword. But like, you know, it would be a bad idea for FreshBooks to try and create one page and rank it all for invoice software, expenses, and time tracking software. You know, so what they've done here is that they've created multiple pages um, and one page for each keyword. So, for example, if I go on this. I'll see that this is the page that they're trying to, to rank for invoice software. If I go on here, I'll see that this is the keyword or the page that they're trying to rank for people that are looking for expense tracking software or time tracking software, you know? So this page is fully optimized towards time tracking. Um, like a mistake again that people will make is that they'll try and optimize one page for too many things. So they might like, you know, a mistake might be that they might say, they might just have a home page or they might just have a features page and try to rank the features page for invoicing expenses time tracking and everything else in between um or like you know if you take uh like a national example like megabus um these guys so this is their home page here when you come down and have a look you'll see that they've got this um they've got a couple of different pages here actually and we'll go a little bit deeper later but like let's take this one here top routes so a, a mistake would be if they were to try and rank for Toronto to St. Catherine's bus, Toronto to Kingston bus, and all of those guys on one page. But instead, what they've done is they've created these separate pages, and this is what they're ranked in. So they've got this specific page that's about getting the bus from Toronto to St. Catherine's. Um, and what they've also done, which is clever, is that they've all, they've put them all in what you can call like a pillar page and these are the different clusters in as well or you can call it like a silo page whatever again we'll get further into this but like the main thing here is that you need to understand about creating um one page per keyword um this is a great example of how a national company that's got multiple locations has done it um and then if we want to go to like a, a local example 
Um, you take these guys, bossandplumber.com. So they obviously offer a lot of different services, so water leaks, valve repair, and toilet repair, whatever. Again, a mistake would be to have one page where they're trying to say that they do water leaks, valve repair, toilet repair, sink repair. No, again, it wouldn't be a mistake. They could, they could do that, but they're not going to rank for all those different things. Whereas instead, what they've done is they've got one particular page for one particular keyword, you know? So water leaks and piping um, in Boston. They've also broken down into like different locations. And again, we'll get further into that, but interesting. They've got a mistake here. Um, but yeah, so when I Googled Boston Plumber, this is one of the sites that came up. Um, again, Plumber's Cork. So when we're looking at this, a uh, Turner Plumbing. This is probably a good example of, of how they could break it down further, right? So they could, so they've got this one here, general plumbing. They could break it down further by doing like a you know, page for leaks and repairs, a page for radiators not working. Though they have broken it down a little bit. So they've got plumbing, bathrooms and gas boiler, you know, which is good enough. Um, and like I said, you know, they when I Google plumbers cork these guys show up, so they're, they're doing all right as a starter. Um, but yeah, so... Just to bring it back, we're going to now go through and start to build uh, and start to do some keyword research for three different types of businesses. So again, an international business. So like this would be an, an example here. It might be like a software as a service company. So like I said, fresh books. Um, so like if you had like an email marketing software, any type of software or any type of company that would have a, a, an international market. In other words, you could trade in any country, whether it's Ireland, England, US, UK, <laughs> I said England, uh, US, Canada, whatever else in between. And a national company would be like, you know, a company that covers the whole country. You know, it might be a multi-location company or it might be a national company like the likes of um, a phone or a utilities company. So they might necessarily be location specific. So like a phone utilities in, in Ireland, you've got Air. In US, you probably have Verizon. In Canada, you'll have the likes of TELUS and um, Wind and those guys. Um, but yeah, and then local will be like your, 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 your standard local business. So like a plumber bake or whatever else type of business you know one location maybe two locations but based in the same city um, and i'm going to break it down and do it for each one what would be good you know if you're stuck for time just watch your one so if you're just stuck for time just watch the local one or just watch the you know if you're a local business just watch the local one but if you've got the time i would go and watch all of them because it'll give you a really good um i suppose it'll give you a really good overview of, of everything basically um, so with that, I'm going to jump into doing keyword research for international companies.